right, Michael, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I want to take a moment and just personally introduce you to anyone who may not know you. You're very known and very loved in the Haywood Street community. Uh, but I hope your message gets shared, gets shared beyond just those small walls. So um, I first met you when you started coming to worship at Haywood Street and you were an inmate at the time serving a sentence at Craggy Correctional. Right. And you were able to uh, come over as part of a program that you were involved with. You could come over with a sponsor, um, be with us in worship, have some other involvement with the church, and then go back to Craggy. Um, so during your time at Haywood Street, when you were coming pretty regularly, I know you helped with haircuts. On multiple occasions, you shared your testimony, um, your hope, your faith with um, our congregants during church, and you just quickly became a very loved brother in Christ to many of us. So we are all the better for it. We counted down your final days together and we celebrated your release uh, very recently, a few months, four months? Four months, almost four months. Okay, almost four months ago. Four months tomorrow. We will celebrate. <laughs> um, so right now, uh, as you know, we're in some strange times. And because of that, you came uh, to my mind just in these past few days in particular. Um, most of us are finding ourselves experiencing a brand of isolation that we may have never experienced before. And it does not come anywhere close to incarceration, but um, you are certainly a triple PhD in separation from society and the most extreme form of government mandated quarantine. So I thought I'd go straight to the source. So um, again, I'm so grateful for you being here, for sharing some of your story and messages of, of hope today. I would love to know, um, in addition to hearing some of your story again, I would love to know how you were able to not only survive, but thrive through your 26 year sentence. Um, I would love to know your thoughts on faith in times of trouble. And um, I would just love to hear your thoughts on what we can all gain from the present moment. Uh, not taking away from the stress and fear and loss and sickness that is happening right now. Um, but certainly there is something from this time that is a silver lining that we can carry forth with us into our futures. So I'm here for the rest of this conversation. I'm going to try to let you do all the talking because you do it best. Um, and yep just thank you i'm here if you need anything but mike is yours um uh, as brooke uh said my name is michael scott michael G. scott uh i served 26 years and four weeks in, in the department of public safety in north carolina uh i was 18 years old i was just just i grew up in group homes and foster homes and uh you know so i got tired of in the rhode island it's a small area and you know i grew up abused, neglected, just basically discarded. And so uh, I ran away when I was 15. I joined a, a traveling sales crew. <laughs> Some people joined the circus. I joined a traveling sales crew. And so, uh, you no, know, I did that for about three or four years from the time I was 15 to 18 and a half, 19, when I, when, um, I ended up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And uh, where I met some people, and somehow a, a, a plan was hatched to rob a drug dealer. You know, and I'm, I'm ashamed to say that we picked the man because we thought he was weak. And uh, in the end, uh, he ended up murdered. Uh, there's a man on death row. I served a life sentence. Uh, and the other three uh, served between uh, 10 and 17 years. So I found myself in prison and, and I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I, I, I make no bones about it. I hate that I was. I hate that I am. Uh, I hate that who I was as a person. But I'm 45 now, and I'm in North Carolina. I got some friends. I was a good, good friends. I got broken. I have a good support system. But essentially, I'm here alone. And 
it's through a series of bad decisions that I made that led me in this situation. Uh, well, now we find ourselves in this present situation, and, and it is some. There are some parallels, but I found myself in prison, and you know, in prison, you go through a series of uh, emotional states, and I, and I broke it down once upon a time. And I wrote it down just as to, uh, you know, when you first go in, you kind of aloof, and it's my dog. So, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I was first aloof, then you go through a period of denial, then you go through a period of anger, and then you go through a period of resignation, like you're defeated. This is it. Uh, there's nothing left. Everything's beyond my control, yet you're on a perpetual soapbox. And then it's acceptance. And now you have good acceptance and you have the bad acceptance. And now we have ourselves in a similar situation where we have, a, a, as Brooke said, a government, government mandated separation from society. And, you know, a lot of people aren't used to that. You know, government telling them when they can actually leave the house. And, you know, and that's hard for people. Uh, I grew up with it. So it was kind of easy for me. And, you know, I know a few ex-convicts that we joke around that we're well prepared for this. But there are a lot of people who are not. They're scared. Uh, they're, they're, they're worried about their loved ones in a whole, whole other state. And this is a situation that's well beyond our control. I mean, it's well beyond Roy Cooper's control or even Donald Trump's control or whoever's in the, whoever the powers are. It's well beyond their control. So in prison, what we did was, okay, we come to ourselves and we realize, okay, Everything that the that the administration did, it was to run the prison, and that's what's going on now. They're trying to run the country as they see fit to keep people safe. We hope you know that they they regardless of what the intentions and motivations are. Uh, so here's the thing: you take this time now, and you and you got to dig within yourself, and you got to figure out how you're going to do this time, because <laughs> essentially you're doing time. And so you got to figure out how you're going to do it. Now, you can sit there and moan and you can live fearfully, which I understand the fear. Or you can just like dig within yourself. And, you know, when things are beyond your control, I, I found it best for me uh, to, to try to look for the one with all the control. You know, there is a I mean, I, I wrote a, a, a post on my Facebook today. It said because uh, uh, a lot of people were uh, are afraid. And I just told them basically that, you know, yes, there's fear in the world, but God is still in control. He is still on the throne. The God who created heaven and earth and everything in between, things seen and unseen, he is still in control. And he loves you no matter what. He's not going to let you be tempted. He's not going to let you be hurting beyond what you can handle. And I just want to take this time really just just really just just to get in there with you and just just encourage you that it's gonna be okay. That I, I just want you to just use this time to to get in the word. Now I told you there's some parts of the, the uh, acceptance that's good and bad. Now you can just be defeated and as I said, live on your perpetual soapbox, woe is me, I'm the victim. And a lot of people do that. Now if that's your thing, I pray for you. But there's a better way to live, a more, more, more positive, a more uplifting way to live. And so I want to encourage you to use this time to, okay, in prison, we, 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 get, we get into a routine. That's the best way to do our time, get into a routine. Uh, in the morning times, we get up, do our devotions, we pray. Uh, in mid-morning, we'll go do, run laps, work out, whatever, uh, lunch. Afternoon, we, we might go watch a movie, just have a time, just, just you don't want to think about nothing else. You know, but the key is routine. Okay. Now, I knew him, I knew a guy. I started, now remember, I started prison when I was 18, 19 years old. So I remember when I was in the U spread, I knew this man called Newell Falcon. I still remember this day. I don't know what happened to him. I hope he's up well. I don't know. But I knew this man, this boy, he was a boy. He was about my age. He was 18, 19 years old. And he had about 10 years to do. And at, at 18, 19, 10 years is a long time. Uh, so he just started thinking of things he can do just to occupy his time. And so one day, uh, someone suggested, well, try, try drawing or try doing something. Well, it wasn't long. He started drawing. He just started getting better, better. And you know what? The man was a beast. Like, he can draw. Like, he just became Michelangelo in front of our very eyes. 
And so sometimes in dark times, hidden talents come to light. And so I want to encourage you to maybe just just sit down and write a list of things that you want to try, that you've been trying. This is the perfect time. Things you've been thinking about doing for years to try and experiment with, whether it be crafts, drawing, painting, singing, learning a, a language. But that's the key. Get into something where you can go ahead and just like just delve into it. You have no distractions and now you have no excuses. And so I just want to encourage you to, to just, just go at it and find you something to do. Uh, again, just write a list. There's arts and crafts, there's drawing, there's painting, there's learning another language, there's uh, learning an instrument. Or maybe you can start an online support group or just there's so many ways that you can use this time of, of isolation to lift yourself up, but more importantly, lift others up. Reach out to others. You got email, you got Facebook, you got, or, or, I'm not really, a, I'm not really a, a, a well familiar with the different tech, different ways to communicate. Uh, the only way I knew about this because Brooke told me about it because I didn't even know about this, but there are so many ways that you can communicate and stay in touch with family and friends. Have, put that part of your routine from say six to eight at night. That's part of your routine. But really, I, I, want, I want to also want to touch on something. I, I started I started with this, that God is in control. Now, I remember in, in, in the book is uh, Exodus, uh, where uh, the Passover originates. You know, the children of Israel lived in a place called Goshen. But all of Egypt was all around. When God sent the plagues over the uh, on the land, it went everywhere but Goshen. Goshen is, is a type of church, and we are the church. Uh, and I just want to—I just want to let you know and, and assure you that the church isn't a geographical place. It isn't confined within four walls. You are the church because if you are part of God's family, which you are, and God loves you no matter who you are, where you've been, who you've been there with, or how often you've been there, God still loves you through Jesus Christ. And he accepts you as you are. It is not my job or anybody's job to tell you what you should do, what you should believe, what you should think. That is between you and God and God alone. Now, I wish there was a time for a, a, a question and answer, uh, but for my faith, and I just want to tell you a little something about my, my walk, how it happened. When I first fell in the, in, the, in the jail, I was scared. I was petrified. And I admit, I, I grew up, I, I grew up uh, in a place called St. Alicia's Boys Home. It was a Catholic, Catholic boys home, but I didn't really know nothing about Jesus Christ. Uh, so, but the first thing I did was I grabbed the Bible because I was scared. And I just read the book of Psalms over and over and over again. Then finally, some some gentleman he advised me. He said, "Read the book of John. Tell me what you think about Jesus." And he started just we just I just started talking, just reading like a half a chapter a day, and me and him would just talk about it. Just you don't have to read a whole chapter. Just read a little passage and just mull out, mull over it, and chew on it all day, you know. And 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 as you're chewing on it, uh, I was I I was encouraged to exercise while I was exercising my spirit. Because it, it, cause we are a tri, because God is a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I'm not trying to get too theological, but we are a triune person. We are a spirit that possesses a soul that dwells in a body. So as we exercise the body, we should exercise the spirit and the mind at the same time. Uh, it's it, 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 they, all, they all intertwine. Just like we are all intertwine. I cannot be the man I am meant to be unless Brooke plays her part in my life. And vice versa, I can't be, she can't be the woman she's meant to be unless I play my part that God ordained for me in her life, and so on and so forth. We are all to connect, just like body, soul, spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and we are all interconnected and interdependent. Now, and this is whole part of this, reaching out, part, you know, reaching out to different people and staying connected and staying in contact. And I would even go so far as saying, I wouldn't pay too much, too much, uh, 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 attention to the news yeah you can watch the six, six the normal news 
but don't watch the news, CNN and Fox and all that all day, every day, because they, they, they're sensationalists. They, they, they're there to keep you there. Mm-hmm. So I want to encourage you all not, not to uh, get too wrapped up in stuff that we can't control because uh, this, this, this crisis that we're in is beyond our control. So I want you, I, I want to encourage you to, to just dive in the word and exercise and hobby uh, and just meditation. Uh, there's just so many different ways to just get your mind off that. And this is exactly what we had to do in prison. We had to get our mind off those barbed wire fences. Because if we stood, because if we paid attention to them barbed wire fences, you know what happened is we got stuck. And I've seen, I've done it myself, you know. And, and I had a set place to sit. I, you know, uh, it, I became. And this is the bad tip, you know. When you get resigned to this is all there is, and this is all there will be, you start becoming bitter. You start resenting people. You start just just feeling just bad day in and day out. And, and, and happiness and a good attitude and a positive attitude is a choice. And uh, so I just, again, I just want to encourage you to uh, make a decision to face this time with positive and redirect that, 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 that fear into something positive. Uh, you know, a lot of people have homes uh, to, to work around. A lot of people have things that they can do. And I just can't emphasize enough. Just, I want you to redirect your vision off the fence. I want to give you an example. Uh, Peter walked on water. Okay, Jesus walked on water. He was in a boat. He was like, "Lord, if that's you, call me out." He said, "All right, come on." So Jesus stepped out. I mean, Peter stepped out the boat like it was dry land, and he walked on the water. The Bible said it. This I, mean, I didn't write it. I'm just saying what it said. He walked on water, and the scripture says that when his attention was taken off Jesus onto the boisterous winds and the and the the, 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 uh, the waves of the sea. The, the word said he began to sink. And, but see, as long as he looked at Jesus, the, the, the solution, he was able to walk on that water. And the, 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 the wind and the waves didn't just appear when he walked on it. It was already, there was already going. The, the waves and the wind was already there when he walked on the water, when he stepped out of that boat. But what happened was he had his focus on something positive and he was able to rise above the situation but when he started looking at the situation he started getting beneath it and what what we need to do as, as, as just people as humans we need to rise above the situation and and i i i, I can't i just can't emphasize enough that i know people are scared baby i know but you can't let it whoop you know there's a saying there's a saying that uh now some may get this, but it is a thing that comes to my mind is uh is a saying that says, uh, I'm not saying life whoop my tail. All I'm saying is it has feelings. <laughs> and see, we know life is hard and it's getting hard now. It's hard now. But we need I, I we need people of faith to stand up and just know that God's gonna bring us through. There's a scripture that says, This too shall pass, and it will pass. And um I don't know what else I can tell you. Uh I, um, Brooke, I don't know if you have any questions. You got any questions you want to shoot at me? No, I think you've covered everything. Um, and I'm sure you are kind of touched on all of this as you were as you were going. I think the only thing um, maybe would just be what you hope people can carry forth from this experience that they're now in now, which again you've kind of already touched on, but maybe we'll just take one more moment on that and then we're good. Well, what this what can come from this is you can draw closer to God, and you can we can get a sense of community of drawing together um, that you're not really alone. Yes, you are isolated and have to do social distancing, but you're not really alone. Know that God is for you; He is not against you. Know that you can get draw closer to God during this time, and and I know that. That you may find a, a, a hidden talent, you may define a, a hidden ministry that you didn't know that God had put in your heart. You may find uh, that that this is the time that you was called to help other people. 
maybe you went through a time of isolation like I have. Not maybe not like this. Maybe you was bedridden. Maybe you was uh maybe you was infirmed somehow. And then, but you was isolated. And maybe you can use those experiences to help others. Maybe you went through what you went through. That way, you may help others go through the same thing. See, so so maybe we can bring, we bring from this is we can take the sense that okay, it's not just about a man. Other people are going through this too. So therefore, we are going through this together. And that's what I want to leave you right there. Yeah, that's a great, great place to leave it.